Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. From 70 degrees just one day ago to our first freeze warning of the season. Season. Good evening, everybody. We're kicking off the weekend with temperatures that are plummeting. Yeah, they are a big difference from the warm and sunny conditions that we all got to enjoy pretty much all week long. Let's get right over to Kim Adams with that freeze warning taking effect overnight. Kim? We do things big around here. I mean, we went from 78 degrees earlier in the week to now a freeze warning. We skipped right over the frost and went right to the freeze warning, which means that temperatures tonight across the entire viewing area will be 32 degrees or even lower than that for a period of about seven hours. So the freeze warning starts at 2 a.m. and it goes all the way through 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Let's get right to it. Here are the overnight lows for the metro zone. A little warmer in the city, obviously, because of the urban heat island, the cement keeping in the heat throughout the day. 34 in Detroit and Dearborn, 33 in Southfield. Slide down to our south zone. You get away from the city, it gets colder. 31 in Milan and Tecumseh. West zone, this will be our coldest zone here with Howell, Brighton, and Fenton all below freezing. North zone, same thing in Port Huron, 30 degrees, freezing in Emmett and 33 in Richmond. Tomorrow we do warm up, though, to a high of 57, and we're not done there. There's some warmer weather around the corner. I'll have your seven-day forecast coming up. Porter Burks was shot by Detroit police officers at least 15 times while experiencing a mental health crisis. And tonight, his family is demanding justice, saying he didn't have to die when they called officers for help on Sunday night. Our Jacqueline Francis joins us now live. And Jacqueline, there was a rally tonight calling for accountability. There was, and tonight's rally comes just one day after the family announced plans to take legal action against the Detroit Police Department. We had a chance tonight to catch up with one of those family members as they continue to demand justice. Between the rally cries, we're getting to know more about Porter Brooks's life. He was a cool guy. You know, he liked to school, he liked to swim, he liked to dance, the, the normal stuff kids like to do. The 20-year-old's death sparking outrage in the city and igniting a conversation about the mental health crisis in our state. My little brother, he was good. He just was going through schizophrenic. Burke suffered from paranoid schizophrenia and was having a psychotic break when his family called 911 for help early Sunday morning. The body cam footage shows police trying to get Burks to drop a knife. I just want to help you, man, okay? Can you do me a favor and drop the knife? Police say he charged at them, which is when they opened fire. Police brutality must be stopped. Marching to the local precinct, Burks's brother, Demando Anderson, joined others in demanding justice and change. Better training to apprehend them instead of just using guns. Officers also on the scene had to assess the threat and, and stop the threat. Um, there's no time in three seconds and someone charging at you with a knife to look over to see what other people are doing. Anderson, who was there when his brother was killed, wishes they never would have called police, never thinking it'd end like this. That's all my mom been thinking about, I can't even think about nothing different. Every morning I wake up, I woke up this morning, crying and tears. It shouldn't have happened to my little brother. The officers involved in this shooting are on administrative leave pending an investigation. Reporting live from Detroit Police Headquarters, I'm Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Still so many questions about the case. All right, thank you, Jacqueline. In Decision 2022, the latest polling showing Republican gubernatorial nominee Tudor Dixon 17 points behind Governor Gretchen Whitmer with 32 days to go until Election Day. Tonight, Dixon traveled to Rochester Hills for an event billed as an Ask Me Anything town hall. That's where our Mara McDonald is live tonight. And Mara, this tour is hitting what are usually those Republican strongholds. Sure thing, Sandra. So, you know, it kind of makes you think that the Dixon campaign is looking at the polling as well and realizing it needs to start shoring up not strong Republican voters, but those who lean Republican. In this Ask Me Anything tour, they're taking a page out of the playbook of Republican GOP hopeful in Arizona, Kari Lake, who's been doing the same thing and uh, getting big crowds. Let me show you. Ask Me Anything in quite a few cases tonight was more audience members making statements, but the stop marks a strategy shift for Dixon's camp, who are eager and willing to get their candidate out there. I want you to win. 
okay? And I'm wondering, where are the commercials? Because I see 600 uh, Whitmer commercials a day. Team Dixon went dark for nearly eight weeks after the primary. Whether that was strategy or a lack of campaign cash, the outcome is the same. Whitmer and her allies have defined Dixon through her abortion stance, which multiple polls have shown is not popular. Tonight, this was Dixon on the issue. Never once have I said, I'm running on my personal pro-life position. A definite shift in tone there. But otherwise, it's what we've heard from the campaign. Criticism of Whitmer's COVID response, especially the learning loss in schools because of school shutdowns. But with some new takes on economics, Dixon says she is no fan of that new $715 million in incentives Chinese battery maker Goshen is getting from Michigan to build a $2.36 billion plant in Big Rapids with the promise of 2,350 jobs. Because I don't believe that we should be giving our hard-earned taxpayer dollars to the Chinese. Back here alive, Tudor Dixon may be at a significant fundraising disadvantage compared to Governor Whitmer, but she is going to be getting some TV time next week. That's because it's going to be the first televised debate between these two. We're live in Rochester Hills tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Local 4. All right, thank you, Mara. Tonight, new details emerging after a barricaded gunman is suspected of shooting and killing a clerk inside a Hampton Inn hotel in Dearborn. The seven-hour standoff ended peacefully last night when a local attorney talked him down. The local defense attorney, Gabby Silver, spent four and a half hours on the phone with the man who asked to talk to her. Silver says she does not know him or any member of his family. She kept the man talking and calm, promising no one was going to hurt him. I got a, a text message from uh, an officer that I know in Dearborn saying they had an emergency and needed my help. I tried to encourage him to come out safely. Um, I tried to, to promise him that nobody was going to hurt him. I mean, it was clear that that was not what the police were trying to do. They Tonight, sources confirm the 55-year-old clerk that was killed was shot in the face twice. Also, the hotel says the shooting was not an argument over the suspected gunman's bill. Authorities are saying the gunman was suffering from mental health issues. Now to a local for update. A woman charged in a suspected drunk driving crash that killed a Navy veteran. 56-year-old Timothy Rogers was crossing Michigan Avenue. This is near I-275 in Canton. It happened Monday night. He was hit and killed. Police say the driver took off, but then later came back. 47-year-old Lavina Flamer charged with operating a vehicle while intoxicated, causing death. That's a 15-year felony. An orange barrel alert for anyone headed downtown this weekend. Oh, it's going to be a mess right now. The southbound lanes of the Lodge Freeway are closed from the Davison to 94. All lanes are expected to reopen at 5 a.m. on Monday ahead of the morning rush. Now in Oakland County, the southbound I-75 ramps close to and from 11 mile as well as the southbound exit to I-696. Those ramps should reopen by Sunday night. Now there is some good news. Crews have reopened both directions of 12 mile under I-75, as well as the southbound entrance and exit ramps there. Drivers will notice a really big change. They built one of those diverging diamond interchanges like the one you've seen on 14 mile. The northbound ramps at 12 mile are expected to reopen sometime next month. Much more to come here at 11, including a longtime high school tradition that goes horribly wrong.